Welcome to this tutorial on Canvas 360 1.5. My name is Mike Sevigny from Taurus Media Labs and I'm going to show you how to track and stabilize your 360 footage using Synthize and Canvas 360. So I'll start by launching Canvas 360. There we go. And in the project we have our 360 footage. So this clip is almost 10,000 frames long and it's at 80 frames per second. Next I'll create a project. So there are three ways to do this. You can either uh, click on the drop down and choose new project. You can click on the plus sign right here or you can just click on new to create a new project. And when you do that this little window comes up and we can either create a project using 360 media which is what we want to do or we can convert an After Effects uh, composition into a 360 composition and this would be a 3D composition with a camera and everything or we can create a blank 360 project so I'm going to create a project using 360 media and in the drop down here I'm just going to select the media we can name the project So we'll name it Yosemite Project. We know that it's equirectangular and that uh, the duration is almost two minutes at 80 frames per second. So I'll just click Create. So Canvas 360 is creating a project based on the specs of this video here. And what we get is a working composition with two layers. One is the working camera and the other is the, our 360 pass. So using the unified camera tool right up here, um, I can just look around the scene here as you would expect. And what we want is a good place to track. So I'm looking around the scene here and this looks to be the best place to, uh, to pull a 3D camera solve from. And if we look at that 360 footage, Yeah, we can pretty much see that this is the area that's going to track the best. So back over to our working composition. This is the area here. Um, I'm going to zoom my camera out a little bit, just a tiny bit, so we can get a bit more in the frame. And now because the camera is moving a lot, um, it's not always going to face that city. Uh, so what we can do is animate our camera to, um, for the most part, keep this uh, area in, uh, in frame. So I'll go into my camera settings and I'll set a keyframe on my orientation. And you can set keyframes on the rotation as well. Um, but uh, right now I'm just going to use the orientation. And so anytime the camera moves away from my area of interest, I'm just going to bring it back. So I think we should be able to track this. So once we're happy with the POV that we want to track, we're going to want to save it. So over to the POV tab, I'm going to call it Track POV and click Save. So by clicking Save here, we're saving the animation that we just um, added to our camera so that we can call it back later in the project. There we go. So now it's saved our POV in our list box on the POV tab. So now I can call back the default front, which takes us back to the front of our 360 media, or I can come back to my track POV, which is actually at a different field of view, as you can see here. 
and our camera will change field of view as well when you're previewing it. Let's go over to the tracking tab and if you were using After Effects' camera tracker you would use the top of the interface right here. Um, but because this is 10,000 frames, After Effects is very likely going to fail at trying to solve um, this, uh, this camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to render this out as its own video and then we're going to take it over to Synthize and we're going to track this exact image here. So I'm going to add this to Adobe Media Encoder. There we go. And in the settings, I'm just going to choose JPEG. And then I'll choose where I want to save it. I'll call it Yosemite Tracking Media. And let's render that out. Okay, now that it's rendered, let's launch Synthize. Under File, I'm going to create a new project. And then I'm going to load my tracking media. So in the settings, we know that the frame rate is 80 frames per second. And under the back plate, we can actually look at our After Effects camera to see what the back plate of our camera is. So by double clicking on the working camera, we open up the camera settings. And here we can see that the film size is 36 millimeters. So in Synthize, under the back plate, I'm going to put in 36 millimeters for the width of the film back. The height will automatically be determined based on the resolution of the footage. So I'll click OK. And now we want to enter our lens value as well. So again in After Effects, in the camera setting, I can see that the angle of view is 101.24 and the focal length is 14.77. So I'm going to copy the angle of view value. And in Synthize, in the Lens tab at the top, I'm going to put in under Field of View that value and it'll automatically detect what the focal length is which is the same thing as in After Effects 14.775 now we know this to be true so I'm gonna check off known in the radio button right underneath it now we can start tracking so I'm gonna go over to the summary tab at the top and I'm gonna click Oh, it's now asking me to auto save which is uh, rather convenient and it auto saves to where your media was loaded from so I'm just gonna click save here and so uh, what we were doing is we were about to run the auto tracker um, so that we can detect all the blips and tracks that can be found within this clip. So let's do that. Synthize takes a fraction of the time that After Effects does to track a shot and there are a lot of settings in uh, in Synthize and a lot of different things that you can do. It's a, it's a very robust program and we're just scratching the surface here. I would recommend uh, if you're not familiar with Synthize at all, uh, you can you know you can follow the steps of this tutorial, but you can also check out their tutorial section on their website, which is uh, extensive and will give you a really good idea of what you can do with Synthize. So our trackers are uh, in place here, and if I scrub around the timeline, I can see that you know those trackers are pretty solid. And what I'm looking for now is uh, our trackers that are not good so let's say we had a tracker on this cyclist down here and it was uh, moving with them that would be a bad track and so we could delete that one um, right now it looks like all of our tracks are good make sure make sure you scrub through the entire timeline and make sure that you know you don't have any bad tracks because just a single bad track could throw off the entire solution so this all looks good we can go right to this to the solve and you can see the big button right here, Solve, so I'm going to click that. So I'm going to click OK there. If you look here, you can see it from the top view. We can see our camera moving. 
we can see where the solution down in the right corner where the solution it is at its worst and that would be right here that still looks pretty solid so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it so I'm gonna go ahead and export that so we'll go to file export and I'm gonna choose After Effects via .ma so a Maya file Maya camera so let's choose that it's asking us where we want to save it I'm gonna save it in my uh, in my folder here we'll make a new in my project folder I'm gonna make a folder called tracks and we'll save that now these settings here uh, nothing has really changed in terms of the Maya camera um, for a, a little while now so just the default settings even though it says uh, CS5 uh, it'll it'll work in CC 2018 so you can go ahead and just leave these settings as they are unless you want to change the scaling and stuff so I'm gonna hit OK now back over to After Effects I'm gonna import that file that we just saved uh, the .ma file just import it as regular media and it'll import a uh, a composition and when you go in that composition you'll see that you've got your camera as well as all of the nulls and so now that we've got it in After Effects we need to uh, inject it into our scene so that it lines up with what we're looking at here um, so I'm going to select all of these layers control A and I've selected all of the layers, so all my helpers, including my camera. And I want to inject that camera data, so I'm going to go to the tracking tab. And now that we've selected the layers, I'm going to choose the POV, which is the track POV. That's what we tracked when we uh, when we took this over the synthize. And then I'll just click Add Tracking Data. So again, we're working with 10,000 frames, so this might take a second, but uh, you know, not as long as the P saving a POV. Uh, this should only take about 10 seconds. So here we are. Let's load our stabilized view. Let's see what that looks like. So there we go. We're pretty stabilized, and our tracks are pretty well locked in so now when I look around and everything is still where it should be and when we look at two views we'll see that the camera is actually moving so it's doing that same motion um, and so if we put stuff in 3d space here if I put a, a title in 3d space um, you know it'll it'll be accurately within the scene within the 360 scene um, but what we were trying to do is stabilize the scene and we've successfully done that um, we can see here that the camera is not moving and if we were to preview this front view, which I'll do right now Just do a quick preview at a quarter quality That looks very good. Um, you know, it's exactly what we would expect. It's always facing in the same direction. So what we want to do now is output this to our 360 uh, media, this stabilization. So I'm going to go back to my project tab, and I'm going to choose the POV that I want to output. In this case, I want to output the stabilized POV. So if we chose the default front, we would just get the same media that we imported because that was our default front of the media. Here is the stabilized uh, POV that we're looking at right now. That's the one we want. And we also have our track POV, which we know that was that was our, our animated POV for tracking. So I want the stabilized POV. I want it to be equirectangular and I want it to be uh, 4K. Make sure that that was our original, um, original resolution, 4096 by 2048, and then click Update. So let's look at it at 100% here. And when we preview it, you can see that the horizon is pretty rock solid. This will now make it easier to remove the drone here. Um, if I zoom out, just to get a better look at it. Right, now that it's stabilized, um, we can just patch in exactly um, what would be above 
the camera without having to worry that you know it's moving around and uh, you know our whole scene is rotating so we have to patch in track our patch um, this right here if we just patch this in with a picture in picture um, we would have no issue here you know we can easily stabilize track and stabilize a shot that is you know 10,000 frames uh, using Synthize and Canvas 360 together. Thanks for watching.